Not my usual setting, I'm in Amsterdam for IBC 2023 and we have just had the Blackmagic Design update and announcement. Loads of new products released, we've seen new cameras, new broadcast equipment. Going to go through it now all very quickly on this video, but it is worth noting I'm at IBC and my first stop on my IBC tour is the Blackmagic Design booth. So as you're watching this video, hearing about the new products, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments below because when I'm there tomorrow, I'm going to be putting those questions to them. My WhatsApp's going crazy, um, but I will be putting your questions to them and then creating more videos throughout IBC, getting those questions answered. So let's go through the announcement then. The very first thing that they announced was a Video Hub 80 by 80 12G router for you rack size, 80 inputs, 80 outputs. It's got 12G SDI. There's a bunch in there, but we don't not have need to go through all of that. I may do a video in future that covers it in more detail because I want to move on to the more interesting stuff, especially for you, my audience. So, web presenter HD, 4K, had updates. This was really exciting for me. The first thing that when, they, when Grant announced this, I was literally like, wow, this is massive. And it's the fact that they have now brought SRT support to the Web Presenter HD and 4K models. We'll talk as well, because they've, they've also brought it to the streaming bridge. And this opens up a whole new world of possibilities in terms of low latency point-to-point -point streaming. I'm a big user of the streaming bridge. I really enjoy using it. But it has, up until now, only been RTP streaming. To be able to introduce SRT streaming, which is a much more reliable protocol, but also in, it's a much more low latency protocol, less delay than RTMP, that's a huge step in the right direction. It's going to open a lot of doors. Also, custom URL support as well. So it's now not as hard as it used to be in the future in terms of if you wanted to stream to platforms uh, that weren't things like Facebook and YouTube. It's a, if you had dedicated streaming platforms that you wanted to go to that needed custom URLs, you've now got that support within the UI rather than having to edit the XML file. And, which is really nice, especially for the 4K model as well, they bought uh, HEVC, which is H.265 uh, support, to the 4K model as well. So that means that you're able to go in that codec, which obviously is a lot more um, economical in terms of you need less bandwidth, but for the same amount of quality. So that's some big pluses to the web presenter models as well. And that all comes in a free upgrade. Now, it's very similar on the streaming bridge side. That gets SRT support as well. You also, they've done some improvements to the return audio feed, so that enables features like talkback being sent, uh, a return talkback feed being sent from the uh, streaming bridge as well, which is really nice. So you can basically put a, uh, a talkback feed or an audio feed into the stream bridge and it will get sent back to the web presenter on the other side. So you've got a bit more of a two-way connection than you had in the past, which is great. And again, that comes as a free update with the ATEM, I believe it's ATEM Switcher 9.2 update. So really, really nice updates there. Now, they then introduced um, a new ATEM control panel, the 1ME control panels. Not going to talk about those too much on, uh, on this video, maybe dive into them in the future. But some really nice kind of thinner models of the control panels for, uh, they've got a 20 panel and a 30 panel. And it's just another really nice control surface for those bigger ATEM products. Now we get onto cameras, because this is, was the real crux of the actual announcement. So the first thing that they announced was the Blackmagic Studio Camera 4K Plus G2. So I kind of was wondering while they were announcing it, I was like, this is strange. I don't quite understand why they're bringing this out, because I, I felt that it almost was cannibalizing the very recent update that they gave to the Pro Studio Camera, because it's got so many good features in it. They've included 12G SDI connectors onto this Plus model, bearing in mind the, model, the Plus model before, the G1, only had HDMI output. You've now got SDI, 12G SDI input and output, which then gives you program return. It also brings talk back to this Plus uh, G2 model. And they've also now enabled B-RAW recording on the USB disk. So you can plug in a USB disk and record in Blackmagic RAW codec. So for the same price as the original, original G1 model, which is $1,345, you're getting now a really, really high quality camera with a lot of features. Uh, there are obviously with, with this model you don't get, compared to the Pro, the G2 Pro, you don't get things like the audio inputs, you don't get things like the um, ND filters, the 
inbuilt streaming. That's the kind of differences, when I thought about it a bit more, that's the kind of differences that we now have between the plus G2 model and the pro G2 model of the studio camera. Then they announced, I think, the camera that everyone wanted to see, which is the micro studio camera 4K G2, the little box camera. We haven't seen this updated for years, and Grant even said on the, uh, on the, the conference that you know, they discontinued that camera because it had problems. They've completely redesigned it, although it does look very similar to the old one, and brought out a bunch of new features. So let's go through them. It still has an MFT lens mount. Some people may not be happy about that, but it does. The 4K sensor inside now, though, has been upgraded. So the ex it's the exact same sensor that's in the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras. It is in the Blackmagic uh, Studio Camera 4Ks. So you get that across the board, which means it's great for mixing and matching cameras. So you might have a studio now that has a couple of the 4K Studio Cameras, a couple of Pocket Cameras, and now a couple of the Micro Studio Camera G2s. And they will all just look exactly the same, because they use the same sensor and same Blackmagic color silence. It's, got, uh, it's been upgraded with locking mini BNC connectors, much better connection. It's got 12G SDI, so it can support 4K 60 frames per second, where the old one only supported up to 30 frames per second in 4K. It's got a much better power connector. It also gets, which is a massive update, USB-C B-RAW uh, recording, so it means you can plug in a USB-C drive and record in Blackmagic RAW. And it's $995. That's a really, really like attractive uh, price point for this type of camera. So I've got a feeling I'll be cop copying a couple of those. They did introduce one more camera in this. Now, it is a camera dedicated for cinema and film, so I'm not going to go over it too much. Maybe again do a video about this in the future, but I'm more about streaming and, and live content, so I'm definitely not an expert in making something look beautiful with film cameras, but they did introduce the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K. It's a full-frame camera designed for high-end digital film. It's got CF Express uh, recording rather than things like SD cards. It's got an L mount, but you do also or can also get EF mount adapters and PL mount adapters. And as I say, it's full-frame, 6K sensor, three times bigger than a uh, sensor than the pocket cameras as well. So you can imagine the type of footage that you're able to get with this. And there's a whole bunch more features with that camera as well. As I say, I'll go maybe into detail with that in the future. Blackmagic, if you want to send me one to try out, I'll happily give it a go. There is just two more things that I want to cover in this video. And that is, I think no one really expected this. Blackmagic have bought out a iPhone app, which is the Blackmagic camera app for iPhone. And I think it's genius. Some people might disagree with me with this, but it essentially is a camera app for the iPhone that feels just like a Blackmagic camera. It's got all the same menu structure. It's got all the same features. You can completely um, have manual control over your iPhone's cameras. High quality recording as well, being able to record in both uh, ProRes and H.265. As I say, the genius behind this, in my personal opinion, is the fact that it has the exact same feel and menu layout as Blackmagic cameras. And I'm almost sure this probably came from a marketing department by saying, let's release a free app, get it in as many hands as possible, the biggest camera uh, market or the biggest most used camera in the world is the iPhone. There's no doubt about that. So let's get an app in everybody's hands get them used to using this UI, get them used to using the menu structure, so when in the future they might happen to pick up an actual Blackmagic camera, they'd know how to use it straight away, and then they start coming into the brand. I think it's genius. Um, some of the other features that you get in here, focus assist, focus peaking, false color. We hardly ever see these type of features in the iPhone at all. Time code, metadata as well. Everything that you expect to see in a, in a Blackmagic camera is now coming to iPhone. I cannot wait to try this app out, and it is available today for free. So you can download that and give it a go on the Apple App Store. It's also got things like stealth mode, but we'll cover that in a separate video once I get my hand on the app. And the final big thing that they announced was an integration with the cloud. It, this app has actually unlocked quite a lot of key features in the fact that once you shoot video on the Apple iPhone using the Blackmagic camera app, you can have it automatically upload straight away to Blackmagic Cloud, where it's then available instantly 
in DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna show that workflow a lot more in a lot more detail in the videos to come on my channel throughout IBC. As I say, I'm spending the day with Blackmagic tomorrow, so I'm gonna be producing a bunch of content showing you all of this in more detail. But I just wanted to jump on, give a quick wrap up of what was just announced by Blackmagic because there was a lot of great stuff and a lot of really exciting products to come. Can't wait to get our hands on them. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my IBC videos as I upload them. And if you've got any comments or questions that you want answered from the Blackmagic stand, put them down below. Once you've done all that, guys, I will see you on the next video.